Greetings, ladies and gents, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Outer Tales, Space, 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 where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. Story number 1. Death Sends His Regards. Written by Dan and Angel. That face watched the court from his perch on the Golden Emperor's throne. Only once before in his time as the Emperor's fool had he seen so many elites gathered in one place. And that had been for the birth of the Crown Prince. Now the great dwarven thanes, elven nobles, and even the chiefs of his people, the halfling clans, were here to see the human ambassador. He had to cover his mouth to stop from laughing out loud at that. Humans didn't have ambassadors. They were little more than monsters that huddled in the swamps, jungles, and deserts of the south. They'd lost their right to be considered civilized almost 500 years ago when the civilized races cast them down. The human knelt in supplication to the emperor. He was unarmed, of course, dressed in a coarse cotton clothes, little better than a farmer. Several large barrels at his back, tribute to the court. The guards had checked the barrels for magic and found nothing other than simple rune to keep the contents fresh. Badface hoped they held wine. You should be on your face, human, the emperor said. Rising to his feet, the human dared to look the emperor in the eyes. I knelt on the courtesy. Anything more will not happen. That face almost fell from his perch in shock while a murmur ran through the court. How dare the human rise without being given leave? And worse yet, speak with such insolence. The emperor would make the human scream for that. It seems that your sentries in the wasteland haven't improved your manners. Let's get this over with, the emperor said, clearly bored with all of this. What is the message your leaders wish to give my court? We are declaring war on your empire, the human said. The murmurs became a roar. Some of the court laughed at the insanity of the human. Others demanded his head. A few asked if this was an elaborate joke. Really? You humans believe you can defeat the Empire? The Emperor asked. The human shook his head. Humans alone? No, we couldn't. But we are not alone. The orcs, the goblins, the centaur march with our armies. They will be crossing your borders by this evening. My father was too kind to letting your species live. We really should have done the world a favor and destroyed you along with your gods. What do you think your primitive, godless armies can accomplish? The human didn't answer immediately. He turned and lifted a plank from one of the barrels, revealing a grainy black powder. You destroyed the old gods. The gods of humanity, orc, goblin, and centaurs were too weak to face yours. So he found a new god, one far stronger than your own. Now the court and the emperor laughed. That face laughed so hard he fell to the floor. The gods of the elves, the dwarves, and the halflings had ripped the weak and divided the gods apart, taking their powers to forge mighty weapons. The Emperor and the guards would make the monsters scream for mercy before they died. The human waited for the laughter to die down, a small smile on his lips. When there was silence, he spoke, his voice cold and hard. Our new god is death. He sends his regards. A single spark fell from the human hand, hitting the black powder. The magical wards, both personal wards, and the far more powerful ones built into the room itself, fled to life. They didn't help. The small match set off the gunpowder in the first barrel, causing it to explode. The four other large barrels erupted a second later. 
The wards were set to absorb magic, not natural explosion. The nails and bits of jagged metal mixed into the gunpowder only added to the carnage. Batface survived by the virtue of being on the floor, burned and battered and holding his intestines in with his hands. The fool stared at the court. A few of the lesser nobles were alive and standing, protected by the ranks of the higher nobles who had taken the brunt of the blast. Some particularly hardy and unfortunate members of the court had been closer to the explosion, screamed and groaned at agony. His eyes went to the throne. It had fallen. The golden emperor, the protector of the civilized world, the most powerful mortal in existence, lay broken and burned on top of it. End of story. Humanity's Weapons, written by Demoth the Tomb. Document has been deciphered and translated from the Orothet Code to Terran Standard. Ambassador Orleth's Personal Log, Unified Year 6044. Humans, well, they have been known to galactic community for just under a thousand years. They are widely accepted as the cornerstone of modern interstellar relations, despite their somewhat isolationist nature. My occupation has allowed me a rare chance to meet them in person on several occasions, as well as read some of the more historical archives. After what I've seen and how they influenced the galactic politics, my impressions of them in person and what I've read from their own history, I've come to the conclusion that humans, as a whole, are universally skilled in two things. Making weapons and utilizing said weapons. For example, despite the advancement in war technology throughout the various galactic factions, humans have always been ahead of the game. And now, I know how. They are constantly trying to make weapons out of everything. Even things that shouldn't logically be able to be used as a weapon. They use micro-FTL drives in their missiles to punch through shields. They use artificial gravity generators meant for interior deck plating as imploding space mines. They even use something they call uh, microwave ovens to jam FTL frequencies. It's insane, but I would have simply chalked it up to necessity of the galactic competition normally. But humans have been weaponizing things used in everyday life since the dawn of their species. According to the historical records, they've used animals called carrier pigeons as napalm carriers. They've used their own coin currency as ammunition and shrapnel cannons. Even their notorious gunpowder was discovered when a human was trying to make medicine. Yet, despite their reckless creation of frankly ridiculous inventions, it would seem that since their beginning, they have used their supposed most powerful weapon and tool. Words. I'm specifically referring to the foreign concept of lying. It would seem that since humans first learned to communicate with each other, they have crafted lies to deceive each other for various reasons. How intelligent beings were able to lie and combat against their own kind without wiping themselves out in the early stages of evolution is still a mystery to me, as humans are unique in speech. However, once humans began interacting with other species, that practice of deception paid off as no other species is as skilled as they are in the art of lies. The prime example of this is humanity's first contact with my people. After the humans had achieved their first FTL flight, they were recognized by the intergalactic law as an independent people that could fend for themselves. That is to say, a fair game for more militaristic and expansionist factions. Envoys were sent by the Galactic Council to inform humanity that they had the standard three-month grace period before the Council's legal protection ended. Normally, a species uses the grace period to prepare defenses, evacuate, and some just let their conquest happen. While protective alliances with other factions had been attempted, 
Rarely do they succeed since a new species has nothing to offer for protection. Humans, however, are devious and schemed of the biggest con ever. Humanity sent an envoy to the Sati, the most economically influential species at the time. The humans proposed an alliance with them. Of course, the Sati brushed them off as desperate and worthless, but quickly changed their mind once the human envoy informed the Sati that humanity was allied with the Litbok, the most numerous militant species in the Quadrant. An alliance with humanity meant a subsequent alliance with the Litbok, meaning even greater economic opportunity and influence. This, of course, was a lie. At least it was at that moment. At the same time, the meeting with the Sati, another human envoy was meeting with the Litbok, who of course proposed an alliance with them. Humanity claimed it would be beneficial since they had aligned with the Sati. An alliance with humanity creates a subsequent alliance with the Sati, meaning trade deals and access to space lanes. And so, both the Sati and Litbok allied with the humans, thus giving humans not just the protection they needed to survive after the grace period without firing a single shot, but also the influence to become an irreplaceable member of the galactic community. And it was all thanks to the humans' most powerful and unique weapon, deception. As humans would say, the pen is mightier than the sword. End log. End of chapter. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.